So I was scrolling through these Steam charts, as you do, at least as I do. And is, is that weird? Is that a thing people do? And I noticed Lost Ark, which I honestly didn't know anything about, maybe I'm just out of the loop, had suddenly shot into the fifth place position and hit a f over 500,000 peak player count. And, you know, I've heard of Dying Light 2, and that was a pretty popular launch and all that, but this is... Uh, eclipsing Dying Light 2 in terms of player count numbers. I was like, what is Lost Ark? So I popped over to the actual Steam page and let me uh, fly out of your way. Ah, the magic of green screens. And I guess I could shrink myself down too. Ah. And I noticed it was getting overwhelmingly positive reviews, but then it hasn't even released yet. So it's hitting that player count without having even released. So I looked a little more into detail and I saw, ah, it's a free to play game, but wait, you can't even play it for free yet. It looks like purchasing one of the Founders Packs is how you get access to playing it early, which is where these big numbers are coming from. So these big numbers are actually before the free-to-play release. And I was like, overwhelmingly positive, um, you know, big player count, and it will come free-to-play. This is probably going to be a big deal. Curious about the system requirements, since I like to cover that on my channel. And hey, look. Ah, well, I don't know if this has something to do with why so many people are playing it, but it looks like... Well, everybody can play it. Well, maybe not everybody, but looks like almost everybody. What do we have here? Well, they don't tell us a lot about the processors. It just says Intel i3 or AMD Ryzen 3, Intel i5 or AMD Ryzen 5, as far as minimum and recommended. And that can mean a wide variety of things based on which processor generation we're talking about. So I'm just going to take this to mean you have at least some kind of relatively modern, you know, we're not going back to like the Core 2 Duos or like AMD's like FX series or something, but any sort of relatively modern processor seems like it should probably get the job done. I think some older i5s are only like quad core. Are there some old ones that are only uh, Duos or was that only i3s? Honestly, I'm just going to say it looks like there's not a lot to worry about on the CPU front. Um, RAM looks pretty normal. We've got 8 gigabytes of RAM for the minimums and 16 gigabytes recommended, and that's fairly standard these days. And honestly, guys, if you don't have 16 gigabytes of RAM, like, it it's 50 bucks, <laughs> you know, maybe less if you get a sale. Uh, might be worth the upgrade, but if you're on this kind of older hardware, you know, honestly, maybe you should just be getting a whole new PC, but it looks like for this game, you're not going to need it. Because um, while you will need 50 gigabytes of storage, which might not be nothing, uh, might not be something to sneeze at for a lot of people, um, at least it's not as bad as some games. And there's no mention of the SSD requirement or recommendation that a lot of games are having these days. Um, but graphics card wise, the most interesting thing, the minimum is only a GeForce GTX 460 or an AMD HD 6850. Now I know this is an AMD and it's like a 6000 series. Wait, 6850, isn't that like the new one that's not even out yet with the update on this? No, this is the HD series, not the RX series. This is an ancient graphics card. And the recommended is only a GeForce GTX 1050. Now there's a bit of a problem here, which is it doesn't tell us what resolution, frame rates, and graphics settings any of this is targeting for either the minimum or the recommended. And here's where I'm gonna help uh, popping in here with a bit more info. Well, first of all, I'm gonna say that if we look at these actual uh, details on these GPUs, we've got the GTX 1050 recommended. Now the GTX 1050 is a two gigabyte graphics card and it launched back um, in, oh geez, it was 2016. So we're going on five or six years old at this point, you know, October of 2016. And uh, 1050 is not super powerful. If you have something like a, you know, Radeon 7950, you're, you're right up there. A GTX 960, which is pretty low end these days, is better than a GTX 1050. And you know, as you move up that product stack, the 1050 Ti has like a 25% performance lead. And again, the GTX 1050 is only a two gigabyte graphics card, which is good news for a lot of people on older systems looking at these recommendations. And then if we scroll backwards, uh, what was it, a GTX 460? Um, so, and a, uh, well, let me double check so I'm getting it right. GTX 460 and AMD 6850 from the HD series of cards. We're going to scroll way back. So these cards I'm passing here are actually better than the uh, minimums 
as we scroll backwards here. Okay, getting into our, uh, here's our HD 6850 at about half the performance of the GTX 1050. Now what that's telling me, given that this is about half of the recommended, is that these might be a 30 FPS and 60 FPS performance target, possibly at 1080p. But again, it doesn't specifically tell us. I'll get a little bit more info on that in a second. Now, if we scroll again, we got the GTX 465, go back a little bit, we got the GTX 460, which is on a very similar performance level uh, to the HD 6850. Now, if we pop into some details on this card, this is a one gigabyte graphics card and it launched in 2010. That's right, this is more than 10 years old, okay? And it's only a 60 series card. So if you have a mid-range GPU from a decade ago, it looks like you'll at least hit the minimums and be able to play this game, which like I said, I'm suspicious or maybe like a 30 FPS target, maybe at 1080p, maybe actually running a bit lower. Now, could I find any actual details here? Well, I did find a Reddit post that had some benchmark data looking like it's from a Chinese site um, or maybe Korean, because I think this game is Korean. Anyway, so I don't know the details on that, but I can tell you that one thing they're comparing is the DX9 versus DX11 implementations. And all signs on this benchmark data point to use DX11. <laughs> because it's looking like, especially on some AMD graphics cards, there's some massive differences here between the two. And as well as Nvidia cards. And um, it's looking like from a CPU side of things, it's also looking like they're doing better using the DX11 implementation. This also gets us a little bit of CPU data here as far as you know what kind of frame rates we could expect. It's looking like an RX 5600X, which is a new high-end, you know, new-ish, high, uh, fairly high-end uh, processor, um, crushing it at over 100 FPS even on the minimums. So that's no issue. Again, as you get onto those lower systems, more of a question mark. Anyway, um, so it looks like the high-end current GPUs are able to run the game at, um, at 4K epic settings, and especially on DX11 mode with the top-end chip from AMD, uh, even the minimums being around 90 FPS. As you go down to like a 6700 XT, it looks like you are still over 60 FPS on your minimums at 4K. So. That looks good to see. Again, just don't use the DX9 mode. And again, 4K settings from NVIDIA GPUs looks like, while it's less of a massive change between DX9 and DX11, it still looks like DX11 is definitely the way to go. And it looks like, again, even at 4K epic settings, it seems like even the 2070 Super and cards like the 3060 are able to deliver 60 FPS gameplay even the minimums being around 60 FPS at 4K. And that's telling me this game is gonna be fairly easy to run. And as you drop down to four, uh, 1440p, um, again, it's just even easier. Now this review really only had modern high-end GPUs. So, you know, we'll take what we can get info-wise, although they did go down to a GTX 1060, running the game at 1080p epic settings, and it does look like they're hitting 60 FPS minimums and well above that on averages. And even on the 1060, it does look like DX11 does perform better than DX9. Now, a little bit more info I can pull up here is I did find somebody playing this, um, uh, what do you call it, early access build of the game on a GTX 1050 Ti. It's unclear what CPU they're using, and this is uh, credit where it's due. This is Rasporilac um, channel on YouTube here. And it's looking like at the very high settings, even in combat, um, although I think this is fairly early in the game, so I don't think we're doing anything too crazy here. If you look at the average frame rates, um, they are, and current frame rates, well above 60 FPS at the very high settings on this 1050 Ti, and this is even during some combat at least. Like I said, other areas of the game could be more demanding, but what I would say then is if we follow up with, okay, so that was a 1050 Ti, the recommended GPU here is a GTX 1050, and if we look at the comparison between the two, right, so if I go back to my 1050, and then versus my 1050 Ti, I believe it's about a 25% performance jump usually. 
So I would say that if we're averaging above 60 FPS at the very high settings, 1080p, on the 1050 Ti, it tells me that their recommended target here is probably high or very high settings with the 60 FPS average. And then, like I said, these would be cutting that in half. So uh, performance-wise, roughly. So I would expect you to be dropping down to 30 FPS, although maybe at low settings you could do better than that. Um, I don't know if maybe the VRAM on these cards would be a bit of an issue. All right, sounds like my kids might be wanting me to change the cartoon they're watching because they are homesick with me today. I hope all of you have an excellent day.